Hello, welcome to this DCS KA50 Black Shark tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the basics of flight mechanics and how to get the aircraft functioning without crashing. To begin, after our startup, we need to go over to this panel here, and this is our Autopilot Flight Director Flight Control System panel. You will see these three buttons are automatically lit up. We have Autopilot Pitch Hold, Autopilot Bank Hold, and Autopilot Heading Hold. We will disable Autopilot Heading Hold. On the far right, we will see an Autopilot Director Control switch. We will depress that to make sure it is lit up. You can tell um, here that we have the English translations because of the settings in the special and options from the controls video, but when we engage the switch, it switches to Russian. That's because it was uh, broken in the latest open beta update. Hopefully when you're watching this video it's been fixed. You can see this up here as well in our cautions and status panel. When they're not lit up, we have the English. When they are lit up, we have the English behind the Russian when it is lit up. This should be English as well based on our settings. So hopefully when you're watching this video, it will have been fixed. All right, I'll go ahead and open up my controls indicator. Here on the bottom, we can see our rudder, our stick, our collective position. This collective position corresponds to our collective here. And down here on the left, we have the throttle power. This throttle power needs to be on this center line here. This is that setting that I said you don't need to have bound, but you can if you want. And that corresponds to these levers over here. The center position is butted up right against this flap. That is flight power. If it is above that, we are in emergency power. And if it is below that, we are not in flight power. If it is below flight power, some of your systems will become inoperable. Here is the brake. Just to give you a frame of reference for what I'm doing while I fly. To begin, we are going to select one of our weapon systems to change our HUD display. While this HUD display is nice, we're not going to be seeing it as we're flying because we will have a weapon system selected. So I'm going to completely ignore it. You can treat it as some pretty lights and we'll talk about with a weapon system selected. So here I just selected my outboard weapons pylons utilizing my weapon selection outward stations. You can select inward or outward, it's up to you. Here we have our altitude and once we get some speed we will see it pop up over on the left. The center is what our aircraft is doing we have our inclination ladder. This symbol indicates our aircraft, and these ticks indicate our bank angle. To take off, we need to ensure that our heading autopilot is disabled. We'll talk about all of this more in detail later, but for now we're keeping it simple. Flight director is enabled along with pitch and bank hold and we're going to trim our aircraft slightly forward. We do this with our trim control keybind. So I'm going to push my stick slightly forward, about there, and hit my trim control keybind. Now I'm going to release my stick back to center, and we'll see the aircraft is still trimmed forward even though my physical control I'm not touching has re returned to center. Because of our trim settings in the control setup video, we are not trimming our rudders, we are solely trimming our stick. That allows us to maintain full rudder control during the course of our flight, which I find makes flight easier. Now that our aircraft is all trimmed and set up, we are going to slightly increase our collective. 
until we start to fly. Because we trimmed forward, the aircraft will want to go forward, so I'll pull slightly back on my stick to keep me in my current position. Utilizing my rudder to make sure I don't go spinning around, and now we're in the air. I can set myself back down by slowly reducing my collective. Kind of on a slanted surface here, so I'm going to spin myself into the slant, and I'm down. Hitting my brake, and I can hit my trim reset, or manually trim it back to center. One thing to note while flying is this gauge here. When you are at slow speeds, or in a hover, we need to make sure this needle on the descent side does not go below the 5. If it goes below the 5, we're going to fall out of the sky. So if you're going slow speeds or hover, keep an eye on this gauge and make sure it does not go, low, go below 5 on the descent side. Alright, let's do that again. I'll trim her slightly forward, and then increase my collective until I go airborne. Once I'm in the air, I am able to trim my aircraft if I choose by hitting my trimmer, and then after you hit the trimmer, release your stick back to center. Every time you trim, in order to regain control, your stick needs to come back to center for your new frame of reference for your controls. When you're learning, I strongly recommend leaving your gear down. That way if you bounce, you're not at risk of damaging things too badly. Or even once you're more experienced and you're in a combat state, I would put it down so if you have to do some extreme maneuvers, you can generally bounce off the ground without too much to worry about. Nice easy movements. Utilizing my rudder to turn, my stick to counter it, adjusting my collective as I see fit. As I mentioned before, when we have some speed, we see our speed on the left. This arrow is us and our speed this upside down sideways L is our maximum aircraft speed. If you are at that maximum aircraft speed, we will have some alarms going off and it will tell you you're at max speed. You probably want to reduce your speed a bit or else your rotors may depart your aircraft. Keeping an eye on our climb descent gauge that way we can make sure we're flying at a constant uh, altitude. On the right, we can see our altitude up here in meters. And when we are below 50 meters, we have this nice gauge to indicate ground and where we are. If I want to slow down, all I'm going to do is slowly reduce my collective and then nose myself up. As I said before, when you get slow speeds, you want to make sure that your descent gauge does not go below the 5. I'm in a nice hover, utilizing my rudder, my stick, and my collective. If we wanted to, we could trim it out, release the stick, and now I don't need to apply pressure. Move forward, I'm just going to nose forward, increase my collective, and away we go. Utilizing my rudders for the turns. land over here at this fart with a rolling landing. 
And then I'll come back around and do a hover lander. So I'm going to make sure my speed is relatively low. Boost my collective. And then come in for the landing. Now I'll go back up and just do a simple hover. I'm going to do a little precision hover landing, and I'm going to land right in between those buildings and those trees next to the road right ahead of me. So, following what I said before, I'll slow down by nosing up, reducing my collective sum, maintaining my altitude, watching that gauge. I can slowly nose forward to get some forward speed. Controlling yourself with your rudders for your turn, your stick, and your collective. I'll get a little closer to that building, so I'll nudge myself left some. That looks good. And using my outside of the cockpit as a frame of reference, just slowly ease myself down. that gauge, making sure we have a nice easy descent. Probably at one on our descent gauge right now. As we get into ground effect, reducing my collective slightly. And we're down. Nice and easy. That's some real nice basics for flight. Now I'll talk about some things to note for when you're going at high speed. I'll take back off. I'll put my gear up just so I can get some extra speed without the drag. When we're flying, because we are a dual rotor aircraft, we need to make sure our maneuvers are not too, too extreme, or else our rotors can hit each other and then they will depart the aircraft, leading to a very bad day. The slower you are, the more leeway you have in your maneuvers, but at high speeds, if you pull too, too extreme of a bank, pitch, or a roll maneuver, um, our aircraft rotors, our rotors will hit each other and that will lead to, as I said, a bad day. So I'm going to go ahead and get some speed now and demonstrate that to finish off the video. Trim myself forward. We are approaching maximum aircraft speed, so we have this alarm, maximum airspeed. That's telling us, slow down or you're going to have a bad day. I am now just about at maximum rated aircraft speed. And at this point, even if I'm flying level, now it's telling us you really are at maximum speed. Stop doing what you're doing. Even if I'm flying level, my rotors have a chance to depart the aircraft. But if I do some extreme maneuvers, odds are they definitely will. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Maybe I'll get lucky and they won't. 
As you can see, you can get away with a lot. But if you get too overconfident with doing this kind of thing often, uh, one of these days your rotors will fly away, leaving you behind. Go ahead and try something even more extreme. Get some extra speed. Helicopter wants to make a liar out of me. Even though I can't demonstrate it here, just trust when I say that you should pay attention to that maximum speed rating and the intensity of your maneuvers. But hopefully showing all of this crazy stuff uh, goes to show you can be extremely nimble if you choose to be, um, and you watch how you're controlling the vehicle. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.